what's going on guys and welcome to another episode of Mark My Words where I am Mark and these are my words. And today we're talking about education in gaming. Now I know what you're thinking, can you really learn something from playing a game? No Mark, it's for kids. Actually they're made by adults so you can fuck off. <laughs> so today I have a very special guest, he loves video games just as much as I do so give a big welcome to James Jimbo Thomas. How you doing Jimbo? All right, buddy. How are you, mate? Uh, absolutely ecstatic today. And thank you so much for coming on and giving time out of your day <laughs> for a lonely little podcaster like me. Like, <laughs> There's nothing else to do, so might as well. Funny thing is, we're grounded, but we don't know what for. I'm pretty sure I didn't doodle on the walls today. Like, I did it last night, but still, that doesn't matter anyway. Let's go. It's not scribbling, right? It's art. Same thing with video games. Yeah, they're a form of art. Perfect. Yeah, perfection Absolutely perfect. in a box, like your PS5. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yes, my baby. Speaking about consoles, what was the first one you ever played? Ooh, the Sega Mega Drive. Same year. What was your first game? Sonic. Yes, same year. I, I also had um, a three game set it had uh, shinobi on it it had streets of rage and it also had golden axe oh my god now see when you just said that it's just giving me goosebumps literally those type of games are like the kind of things where you when i started off same as where you started off mm. but then it's like oh wow you're hooked on it already it used to drive me up the fucking wall because golden axe i don't know what it is i always found Single player a lot easier than multiplayer. I found it like it kicks your ass more when you got extra help. I'm exactly the same. With stories, it's like you're into it. But then when you're a multiplayer, you're like, uh, example, uh, Call of Duty. It's like, oh, I love the story. But then it's like multiplayer and then I'm like, uh, you're dead already. Yeah. So it's like I prefer more to the story than to the multiplayer. That's the thing when you get like certain gamers and stuff, like uh, you always get the ones I like to do the shortcuts. It's like when you're playing like Tekken or something like that, you always get that cheap spammer that does all the moves that are unblockable. Like my brother used to do that when I used to play Tekken with him, like, and he was just a cheap bastard. And the only way to beat him is just to be as cheap as he is. My late godson, uh, I got him into gaming. I took him for a weekend, we went to go see Aladdin, the new, uh, with Will Smith and all that. Oh yeah. Uh, we went on the arcade and he wanted to try Tekken. Mm. Luckily enough, there was a Tekken, proper old school Tekken arcade. Went on, he said, yeah, do this. He's like that. Mm. He said, oh, Uncle James, you can do it. Yeah, he just kicked that. So he just pressed all the buttons and everything and he did it phenomenally. I miss the times where you have to button bash. They're so sophisticated now. It's like when you play Mortal Kombat, like it's... It's like so many technical things for like the fatalities and all that. You're like, you got to remember all these button codes. I'm like, I, I just want to push buttons just to see if I win. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, nobody does work. And then sometimes it's just like, oh, I can't be it's the same with um, Time Crisis. Oh, Time Crisis. I love Time Crisis. When you're in the arcade, you know, the pedal's right there. There's the gun. Oh, I could go on for hours. Yeah, I really enjoyed that. I was bad at it, but I just enjoyed... It's just so therapeutic to just to shoot shit, really, isn't it? Yeah, to shoot random shit. Like, fuck off, fuck off, fuck off! <laughs> what random fact have you learnt from playing a video game? So this could be anything from old school to anything current. To be honest with you, um, my mum and dad got me in my first Sega. Um... I can remember roughly, um, I was sitting next to my grandfather and my grandfather kind of talked me into it. Mm. Uh, I was hooked on already. Um, the one thing I have learned from it, was like we both, if it's just the game or the PC, PC gaming or whatever, it, it keeps your mind focused mm. in a way. Um, myself, um, it does really stress a lot. A lot of people don't say that, but when you're in like that kind of mood and like you, you're sad or you have stuff in your mind, that kind of goes away. And then you look at that game, you concentrate it, and you're like, it keeps you focused. 
it does. It detains you. It, it's probably the best thing for you. If you really are that stressed or whatever you've got on for your life, that is probably the best thing for you to do. I do find it a very good escape, like especially when, like when I play personally, like and especially if you play like action games and anything like with violence and like uh, I don't know where you, but you, but when I play angry, I'm not angry like an hour into like hacking the shit out of things, like playing like a Dark Souls game or something like that. Like <laughs> unless you die in the most bullshit way, that's the only time I get really angry. <laughs> yeah, or you have like a big, huge freaking, um, like a big. If something goes wrong with the game, this glitch came up when I was fighting these guys. And all of a sudden, I was like upside down, but sword fighting at the same time. I was mad. And then I got killed. <laughs> uh, of course, you can't, you can't have something batshit crazy happen and then not suffer the consequences. The random fact with me is, it's like when you make a mistake on a certain game, like say, say now play Ghost of Tsushima or anything like made from From Software, you make a mistake, you pay for it. That's one thing I've learned from games. It's like, you make a mistake, you die in the most gruesome way. <laughs> and you you learn not to do it again, don't you? Like, you try your best, and that's how you end up growing in your skills as well. What skills, in your opinion, do you think people can pick up by playing certain games? It depends what you're actually really good at. Mm. Um, for instance, I'm shit at freaking racing games. Same. Holy <laughs> shit. <laughs> If you go to the arcade, it's like, what, put a pound in, have a laugh, whatever. Um, I can never play car games because I they just, they don't interest me one bit. I love racing, but it's just not computer for me. What about Crash Team Racing or Mario Kart? Oh, Mario Kart, I could kick her ass easier. I kick her <laughs> in with her ass easier. <laughs> At Mario Kart, I could probably know every single shortcut, every trick, everything. Um, I can give you an example. Uh, back probably sometime last year, probably November time, um, my mum actually wanted a game on the Switch and we played uh, Mario Party 8 and we played um, Sonic and Mario the Olympics. Oh, yeah. I, I can't believe I'm out. about to say this. She actually did kick my ass in everything. <laughs> And the one thing she couldn't kick my ass in was Mario Kart. So I was kind of relieved. I bet you were so excited to get on there. I said, right, let's play a real game, ma'am. I'm going to kick your fucking ass on this one. <laughs> my pride will come back. <laughs> yeah. Um, and there was... Uh, so, yeah, that it, that's another thing as well. With games as well. It's like you, can, you can play with other people as well. Mm. But when you have that thing that you love the most and you do it with your mum that's probably the most precious thing ever to me with my mum well it gives you a more of an extended connection with her as well because you got something to relate to and and enjoy yourself with really isn't it yeah so it's kind much. of nice like like if i put a ps4 controller in front of my mum she wouldn't know what the fuck to do with it i think the last game she played right was odd world abe's odyssey on the ps1 Back in the day, though, I'd never seen anyone die so much within the matter of 10 minutes. Like, and in that game, you die your fucking gruesome death. You, know? you fall off a fucking ledge, you blow up. <laughs> it's like you get eaten. <laughs> Again, it makes you pay for it. Like, there's, um, come back to my mum now, uh, probably uh, when we were on the first lockdown that we had last year. Um, we had a few couple of drinks and all that. Um, my old man decided to go off to bed, and my mum said, "I really fancy a game on my on your VR." And uh, again, the VR, I've never played something ever like that, and that is probably the best gaming experience I have ever had. Some people do actually think VR is not all that great. It is freaking amazing. Yeah. My mum actually, um, I don't know if you've heard of it, it's called Shooty Fruity. No, I don't think I've heard that one. It's like uh, basically in the supermarket, put the heads on and everything, have the controllers. You're in the supermarket and you scan stuff, and all of a sudden you have these 
where the scanner is, you have like five, six light bulbs. You have to keep the fruit off the counter before it blows up. Right. And this big fruit comes towards you. You have big freaking bananas that actually freak you out. Um, you have strawberries, you have apples, you have the lot. And when she was playing in there, I told the controls and everything. And I still got the video somewhere. And she said that uh, she thought it was so real. She was like this. And she said, when the ammo comes apart from the gun, that means your ammo's gone. Yeah. So when it came apart, she actually said, hmm, it smells like bang, bang. <laughs> it's like she thought it was that real. And I was like, what the fuck are you smelling? <laughs> I think I'll definitely play something like that on VR, but I definitely stay away from the survival horror kind of stuff. Like, with the stuff of Resident Evil 7, I think they've done it so well. If you put it in VR, I think I'm going to shit myself. Like, I shit myself playing third-person RE2 Remake with Mr. X chasing me around the police station. And like I said, that is the most terrifying thing, especially if you don't have any infinite weapons. It's like, you got to get smacked. <laughs> you run in, like... And it's just like, fuck... And of course, you shoot his hat off. He gets a he gets angry and keeps chasing you. And it's like he starts power walking towards you. Like, okay, we got a code fedora. We got a code fedora. Bye. <laughs> the VR games I've got is uh, like the Batman one. Oh, um, yeah. The Batman one is kind of short, but it's excellent experience. Um, like you put the cowl on yourself. You can use the batarangs. You use gadgets and all that. Um, they could have done a little bit more with it, but it was. It was more of like there was no punching or anything. It was just using gadgets and stuff like that. Um, but there's so many VR games I've got that it's just like, which one do I start off first? It sounds like they made a good step in stone with it, really, haven't they? With that Batman game, was it mainly like stealth on like bad guys and stuff like that? Then like hiding in the shadows. There was. Uh, I wouldn't say stealth no i can remember there was a bit nightwing actually dies and you have to go find him yourself to see what happened oh, and right. this gadget you use and you have to rewind back to of the investigation to see what actually happened and then penguin comes into mind so we, we go find penguin so when you're in the vr headset you can't see anything in the room you see everything hmm. and you can see you're like on top of the guard line, and there's two guys holding another guy in his penguin. And obviously you need to interrogate penguin. So you throw the baton around and you throw the baton around into the uh, fire extension and everything just goes like, like that. Yeah. And all of a sudden you, you're like, you're there and then penguin's actually hang, hanging upside down. And awesome. you're interrogating them. So, I bet that's um, hilarious. Like, uh, there's Nolan North voice in him in that one, then. <laughs> yeah, he is actually. Yeah. Oh, that's um, amazing. There's, um, again, it's it's not stealth. It's more. It's what Batman should be. It's he's a detective, so it's more of a detective Batman game, really. But again, it's VR, so it's. Oh. Yeah, as soon as we do this, I can go in. <laughs> yeah. I'm already sizing you up for what games you need to try next. It's like, what yeah. I mean, I'm in a good mood. This is one that does ground my gears for people who are who are kind of outside the gaming kind of area. Like, like they they always say, "Oh, that's just for kids." Is it just for kids, really? <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> uh, it's mostly for everybody. Mm. Um, my cousin that lives in Basingstoke and um, he he's like 46 now mm. and he still loves gaming um, I have a friend's dad who's like 62 and he's still doing it now so um, I think basic gaming is for everybody um, tick the switch mm. that's more for yeah you can play it by yourself but I think that's more for family so your yeah. mum, your dad, your nan, your grand, whatever. Yeah, um, that's when you all come together. You will play and everything. So, no, I don't think it's just for kids. I think it's for everybody. Yeah, I think it's just a dumb generalisation because they think this is what keep, keeps kids busy. Yeah, it can, can kids can be the target audience, but when you start looking at 16 and up and 18 rated games, I'm like, 
Are they really for kids, though? Could you imagine a five-year-old playing GTA? <laughs> Mommy, I just ran someone over! <laughs> it's like... <laughs> Do you know the one game franchise I want to show these people, right? Is the Manhunt franchise. And if they say it's for kids. Now, have you, have you played that franchise at all? I don't think I have. Um, I've probably... A couple of years ago, I probably tried it. It didn't really interest in me a bit. Um, it was all right. Yeah. But it wasn't my kind of game. Well, with kind of stuff in that, like uh, you end up killing people in the most gruesome ways. I think uh, I played yeah. Man and Two. I was killing someone with a toilet seat. And <laughs> it's, it's, that, it's that kind of fucked up. Like, it And actually, I'm just like, yeah, that's kid friendly. <laughs> actually, that actually reminds me of a game that I played a couple of months back. Um, I've still got my PS1, 2, 3, 4, and I've got 5. I played the PS2 a couple of weeks ago, and there was one game that actually does remind me of, of that. It actually was The Punisher. And there's mm. so many ways you can kill that guy. Like, if you need to interrogate them, you have, like, I don't know, like a screwdriver or something, and you drill right through his head. That was more, that was, oof, that was awesome. I read the Punisher Max series by, uh, by Garth Ennis, and there's some gruesome shit on that, like. <laughs> oh, yeah, I know. And a fair play, like the first book, it goes into like his uh, experience in Vietnam, and he's literally standing on someone's head, drowning them in a the river. I'm just like, could you imagine him like PG 13? That's it, I couldn't, <laughs> really couldn't. Same thing with this game. It's like, but, but it's for kids, though, isn't it? There, kids. You can't really just say, like, oh, that game is off for kids, but you don't know that until they try it. Mm. Um, for instance, um, going back when I had my PS4, uh, I went to game to collect it. And funny enough, this mum, her dad, and uh, I'm guessing it was her son, was basically next to them. And the son, he looked about 10 or 11, something like that. Son actually picked up GTA. The mum actually said, no, oh, back anyway. <laughs> I probably could understand why she said no, because she knows it's probably, is kind of violent in a way. Yeah. It's a game. I remember Don Trump uh, used to say um, GTA was like, or Call, Call of Duty of GTA or whatever, the most violent games and it's happening all over the planet and stuff. That's yeah. a lot of bother. It's just a game, for God's sake, you know? Just because you shoot someone up in a game doesn't mean you're going to go out and do it in real life. Exactly. That's it, unless you're but... really dumb and stupid. That's when they. That's why I like it, when they start blaming video games for, like, violence and stuff like that. I said, yeah. no, they were violent before that. Come on. Yeah. I, like, um, my mum told me a couple of years ago, um, playing DJ downstairs, uh, she was cooking food, and there was... Obviously, they're swearing in GTA. And she was like, what are you swearing at that? It's really bad. And I'm like, it's just a game. It's just, just a, a game. It's just a fucking game, mother. It's fine. Like, yeah. <laughs> oh, shit. Right, right, now I'm grounded. <laughs> yeah, clip around the earth. It's fine. Oh, and he swore. Uh, he does, just because he swore doesn't mean you have to swear, does it? <laughs> exactly. It comes from, like, a lack of education with these people, isn't it? Because they... They haven't really experienced it themselves, so that's why they dismiss it. That's what I find. It's like when the pandemic started, people thought it was just like the flu. Because of course, until you see it affect people and stuff like that. Like I used to work at a field hospital, right? So I've seen a lot of people like recovering from COVID, and the amount of frail people I saw, it is it is eye opening and a bit scary. Like, yeah, so I'm, I'm kind of glad I'm young and healthy because if I was that age, I'd be. Like, I'd be like, just shoot me. I was just like, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to deal with that. Like, because it doesn't look like something. I say something I don't wish on anybody, and no. I don't want anyone else to experience it either. For someone starting out on gaming, what would you recommend someone to start off with, like co console wise? I would probably, I would actually probably say PS One, or even the PS Two, to be honest. The Wii is probably a good start. It's like the really old Wii. I used mm -hmm. to have. Um, you need to start off something easy, like probably, well, <laughs> I was about to say Crash Bandicoot, but again, <laughs> that that really does frustrate you in a way. 
Um, but I don't know, damn stuff, high road. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, there was a game probably. Um, I still love to this day when I was probably teenager. Um, I don't know if you've ever played it, but it's probably the most favorite game that I have ever played. One of my favorites, Sly Raccoon. I never played the Sly Cooper series. Right, I'm hanging up. I'm sorry, Mark. <laughs> I just never got introduced to it or to that. I've I've seen reviews on it, like on YouTube and stuff, and it looks like a fantastic game. So uh, tell me a bit about the franchise. Uh, Sly Raccoon. Okay, uh, obviously he's a raccoon. Uh, he's a thief, but he's his family is uh, thieves as well, but they're good thieves in a way. So it's kind of like Robin Hood. He steals from the rich. Um, he has two friends. Um, one of them is Bentley, who is a hippo, and Bentley is a uh, turtle. So uh, they basically just go around and steal in uh, little parts to stop making this bad guy called Clockwork. So um, it's like you collect coins, you collect treasure, you can upgrade the graduates and stuff like that. And then there's about four, four, four games of it. So um, it's that is that is probably for kids, but that is like for me, that's that's a game I grew up with. So I can never stop playing it. Yeah, it's a, it gives you a nostalgia rush. There's like certain games I yeah. always jump to especially like when i heard like they were remaking resident evil 2 and resident evil 3 i jumped on it straight away because resident evil 2 was the first one of the first ps1 games i've ever played because when i bought the console i had that one and then i had a platformer called pandemonium so i didn't think much of that one but uh it i don't know it was my first introduction to zombies really that's i think that's what fascinated me and it yeah. scared the shit out of me. And I just say, oh, I, I really want to just shoot the shit out of zombies and these creatures. Like, <laughs> so, yeah. But, <clears throat> but Sly Cooper is definitely going to be on my list to try anyway. So I'll be going through them in order. So, if um, just so you don't hunt me down and kill me, <laughs> I know where you live. Um, but yeah, uh, honestly to God, as soon as you play Sly Raccoon, You'd be nice to be saying, yeah, you're right, Jimbo. It is it's cool. It's, it's, it's an entertaining game. It's good. It really is good. If you're oh. one of those people who wants to go 100% like me, and I mean proper 100%, that is just easy. Uh, you're a platinum boy then. <laughs> um, Get on that, like. Yeah, probably. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm getting close to actually finishing um, the remasters of Spider-Man and the other one as well. So um, I'm getting quite close. That's really good. Yeah, um, I haven't played the Miles Morales one yet. Uh, is, is that one just as good as the first one? It's short. Again, it's probably um, the same time length as when they bought out the extra bit for Uncharted after Uncharted 4. Okay. So probably the same length, but it's it's brilliant. It's, awesome. honestly, it's, it's good, really good. Thank you so much for listening in, guys. I release videos every single Wednesday, so you don't want to miss that out. So hit that like, hit that subscribe, share, and turn on the notifications so you don't miss any future content. Any parting words, Jimbo Boy? All I say, go gaming. Oh, yes. Stay beautiful, guys, and good gaming. I say goodbye from me, and have a goodbye from Jimbo. Thanks, Mark. Thank you very much, mate. Oh, you're very welcome, sir.